All right, so today we're covering lesson 4-1, which is powers and exponents. And you started off your lesson with um, the IXL, Evaluate Exponents. And if you finished that, because we started it uh, last class, you will continue with the prime factorization. All right, so you guys, when we are, um, we've done this before with multiplication, you know that multiplication is repeated addition, right? So you know that 2 times 3 means 2 plus 2 plus 2, or 3 plus 3, right? Exponents is repeated multiplication. So exponents is repeated multiplication. So here we have 2 to the 4th power. That's how we read this. 2 to the 4th power means... 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's the repeated multiplication. Okay? Now, the base, that's the big number, that's the factor that is being multiplied. The exponent, this little number in the top right-hand corner, that exponent tells you how many times the base is being multiplied times itself. So, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 1, 2, 3, 4. That's why we have a 4 for the exponent. The whole thing together is called a power. Okay? So the whole thing is a number expressed using the exponent. That whole thing is called a power. Please make sure you have that diagram and those um, definitions written in your notes. So example 1, make sure you write the heading the title of the, of the example. Example one is write products as powers. So here we want to write 12 times 12 times 12 times 12 times 12 using exponents, okay? So the base, remember the base is the number that is getting multiplied, right? The base is the big number. The big number. So, here, the base is what? 12. The base is 12. And that base is being is used as a factor how many times? That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. So, 12 times 12 times 12 times 12 times 12 can be written using an exponent as 12 times. To the fifth power. 12 to the fifth power. Where that exponent is that little number in the top right corner. Okay? So the exponent is the little number in the top right corner. And that number, the one in the top right corner, tells us how many times the base, the big number, is being multiplied. All right. So here we have a couple of examples. We have a negative 8 times negative 8 times negative 8. What's the base? Negative 8, right? Negative 8 is the base. And how many times are we multiplying that base? Three times. Very good. So, the base is negative 8, and you guys, just like with fractions, it's very important when we use an exponent for the negatives, we need to make sure that we put that in parentheses, okay? So, you must use the parentheses with the negatives. Make sure you write that down. Must use parentheses with negatives. Now another thing I wanted to mention is uh, the third power. Okay, does everybody see this third power? Eight to the third power? That has a special name. That special name is cubed. Okay, so you will see this or hear this uh, read as negative 8 to the third power or negative 8 cubed. Okay, so we mentioned, I mentioned here 
that you must use parentheses with negatives, okay? And I'm going to show you an example of why, okay? So let's say we had um, negative 2, negative 2 to the fourth power, okay? When you have an exponent, it is um, getting applied to what is right next to the exponent. So here, what is that 4 right next to? It's not right next to the negative 2, it's right next to the 2. So if it's written like this, this says 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? But then at the end, we want to apply that negative. Is everybody clear with that? That's how that's written like that. But we don't want it, we don't want it to be a negative because if we, like if we had up here, if we had negative 2 to the, to the fourth power, if we use parentheses, negative 2 to the fourth power, that's going to say negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Does everybody see that? So in the first version, my sign would be what? Negative. In my second version down here, my sign would be? positive. Okay? So it is very important that when you have a negative and you're raising it to the power, you must use parentheses. So here we have 7 times 7. How do I write 7 times 7 using exponents? To the power of 2. So that's going to be 7 to the second power. And just like we said, Somebody said earlier, what is that going to be called? Squared. Very good. So that 2 has a special name, and that is called squared. All right, so for the third example here, we have 1 and 1 half times 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 1 and 1 half. What's the base? 1 and 1 half. 1 and 1 half. Bless you. 1 and 1 half. And what is, it, what is the exponent going to be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, look at how I write this. 1 and 1 half to the fifth. Does that look right? What do I need here? I need parentheses. I need parentheses. Because remember, you want the entire thing to the fifth power, not just the one half. Is everybody clear with that? So with fractions, again, you must use parentheses. So here, must use parentheses. So how about 2.85 times 2.85 times 2.85 times 2.85? Question. So here, the base is going to be what? 2.85. And we're going to raise this to the fourth power. Now let me ask you, do I need parentheses with decimals? No. You do not need parentheses with decimals. Because this is the whole number, right? That's the whole number. Okay, it's not a, it's not a whole number, but that's the entire number. Does everybody understand that? Okay? So here, you... you you don't want to get confused and just look at the one half because you want to look at the one and one half. This one is two and eighty-five hundredths. That's the entire number. You will usually not see parentheses with the decimals. So example two is to write whole numbers as the product of prime factors. Do you guys remember how we found prime factorization before? What did we use? We used our... Right, we used our factor trees. So here, we're going to use our factor trees again, okay? So we're going to start, let's do 504 together. So we'll do 500, but we know it's an even number. So we can do 2, but we can do better than 2, so let's try 4. 
Okay? So here, here, if you do, and you guys, you, like I said, you need to have your scratch paper work too. So four, that's going to be one, four, subtract, that's two, eight, 24, six. So 126. Is everybody clear? So there's your long division. It's really fast. So here, 504 gets broken down to four times 126. Are those both prime? Nope, not yet. So the four can be broken down to two times two. The 126 can be broken down to, okay? So let's try six. So six times, and that's gonna be 21. Are they all prime yet? No, not yet. We can break the six down to what? Two times three. So six times 21, the six breaks down to two times three. The 21 can be broken down to three times seven. Three times seven. And then of course these twos, because we don't want them to get lost, we want to bring those down too. Okay? So this is our prime factorization. Now, what is new about this for, for this lesson is now we're going to write these using exponents. So we're going to write using exponents. Okay? So here, 504. Now we're going to look at our factors. So we've got some twos here. How many times are we multiplying two times itself? Three. Three times. So that's going to be two to the third power. Or what's the other special name? Two cubed. Very good. And then we've got a couple of threes we're multiplying. Three to the second power. So times, make sure you might write the times in between because it's mul repeated multiplication. So this is going to be three to the second power. What's that special name? Squared. Squared. Very good. And then finally we have times seven, which is just seven. So times seven. And there is your prime factorization using exponents. So now I would like for you to uh, do, to write 135 as a product of prime factors with your table partners. I'll give you about two minutes. Um, on the video, if you're looking at the video, you should pause before you get the answer. Do it on your own first. So here, very good, we have 135 is equal to three to the third power times five. So here, 135, I divided by five first, so five times 27, and then 27 can be broken down to three times nine, and then the three, I mean the nine, can be broken down to three times three, okay? So we, and, and each time I brought down the five, each row. So here we're gonna write using exponents. So the three is the one that has the repeated multiplication. So that's three to the third power times five. So example three is to evaluate powers. Please make sure, all right, make sure you write this sentence down to evaluate powers you write the power as a product of factors and then simplify. So for this example, it's already completely done for you. It says h to the fourth power, which is eight times eight times eight times eight, and then we simplify. So here we did eight times eight first and eight times eight there, and then see eight times eight is 64? Eight times eight is 64. And then I need to use some scratch paper work here on the side. 64 times 64. Is everybody clear? And then when you do 64 times 64, you're going to get the 4096. Now, when you are showing your, when you're doing your homework and you're showing your work, you guys, 
If you have this and you have 64 times 64 and then you just have 4,096 and you don't have scratch paperwork, I'm going to assume that you used your calculator. Is everybody clear? So if you don't have your scratch paperwork on your homework, you're going to get a zero. You got it? Because no calculators allowed. Got it? So here we want to evaluate the negative 3 cubed. Negative 3 cubed or negative 3 to the third power. So what does negative 3 cubed mean? Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Negative three. Very good. So here, we're going to multiply the negative 3 times negative 3 first, which gives us 9. And then bring down the, the rest of it, times negative 3. And then 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. And there's your final answer. For example B, we have 2 tenths to the fourth power. So here, we're multiplying... 2 tenths times 2 tenths times 2 tenths times 2 tenths, okay? So now we're going to simplify. So what is 2 tenths times 2 tenths? No. Now pay attention to this, you guys. What's 2 times 2? 4. How many numbers behind the decimal there? Two. two. So this is one, two. So my answer is, you see that? you got to pay attention to what you're doing, okay? And then we have times 0.2 times 0.2. So now, you guys, I'm going to multiply four hundredths times two tenths. That's four times two. Eight. How many numbers behind the decimal? There's two here, there's one there, so that's one, two, three. So this is 0 0.008. And now we're going to multiply that times two tenths. So what is eight times two? Sixteen. And how many numbers behind the decimal? Three here and one there, so this is four. So that's one, two, three, four. So here is my final answer. Is everybody clear? Please be careful when you're multiplying the decimals like that, okay? All right, for example, C. What are we multiplying? Two to the third to the third power. I mean, two thirds to the third power. Two thirds times two thirds times two thirds. Very good. So two thirds times two thirds times two thirds. Very good. And remember, when you are multiplying fractions, you multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators. Okay? So two times two is four times two is. 8 over 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. And there's your final answer. So now for your exit activity, you will go back and you will work on the IXLs that we started at the beginning.